couple of quick announcements I'd like to make. Uh, tomorrow night is associational meeting. We have messengers, and the following folks are messengers from our church to First Foxworth. It starts at 6 o'clock. Bus leaves at 5.30. Melvin Porter, Teresa McKenzie, Pud and Lucy Stringer, Jimmy and Nancy Thomas, Mike and Jen Patrick, Estelle Stringer, Beth Brumfield. Those are the individuals that will be our representatives from our church. So if you, uh, if you see some of these people and they're not here tonight, you see them, let them know they have that responsibility tomorrow night. Also, I have a, uh, I guess we could say maybe uh, we really need to try to help our neighbor in church out. Turn his chapel. Now, some of you may have already been able to do this. I supposed to, I found this out last week. I, I was not here, and I got it last week. Many of you know they're going to have a chicken plate. They're trying to do a fundraiser, and it's Saturday coming up, May 6th. These are $10 a piece. I have 20 tickets. They have helped us several, several times in our rib fundraiser, and I really, really wish we could get rid of these 20 tickets. Uh, we already bought two ourselves, and, uh, and so Miss Brenda will have it immediately following. I have to turn this in tonight. They're having it this upcoming Saturday, and uh, 10 Ten dollars a plate, but it's to help turn his chapel. And but they have always went well beyond their duty to uh, help us. They've sold open how many rib plates or, or racks of ribs for us. So if you will please, even if you don't, you can buy it and give us a gift to a homebound shut-in person. That would be great if you could spare the ten dollars. And so I'll have to turn this in tonight immediately. Follow, and I'd love to be able to get rid of these because Charlotte Stringer. I've got Brenda is going to be in contact with her immediately following our service tonight. But uh, we had a great service this morning. I really enjoyed it. Had a great time. Um, Brother Evan, do you have, where you at? Do you have any, that's a dumb question. I started to say, do you have anything you want to say? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> I'll leave. Yeah, there we go. He knows. He knows. All right, yes, I do have a few things that I would like to say tonight. Three points of the Baptist faith and message. No, I'm just, okay. Anyways, moving forward, moving forward. I uh, would like to just remind you of a few uh, happenings going on in the life of our church. Of course, as Brother Tim mentioned, tomorrow, Marion County Associated Meeting over at First Baptist Foxworth. Starting, the meal is going to start at 6. We're going to leave here from the church at 530. If you don't want to eat with us, you don't want to fellowship with a bunch of great Baptists, and you can show up to the meeting at 645. That is absolutely fine. Also, next Sunday, we do have our, calling it the uh, our graduation recognition Sunday is basically what's, what's happening. Sunday morning will be our seniors graduating from high school and college. We will recognize them in the Sunday morning service, followed by a potluck lunch after cover dish lunch. And then that evening, we will recognize our, uh, our kindergartners who are moving up into the first grade. So if you have a senior or a kindergartner who is being uh, recognized next Sunday, please come and let me know. That way I can make, their, make sure their names are on the list and we can get them taken care of. Also, 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 there's one other thing that I need to read. The Wednesday night meal for the months of June, July, and August. To keep our Wednesday night meal for the months, for those three months, we need someone to volunteer to cook for those months. The dates are going to be June 14th, July 12th, and August 16th. If you can cook for those months, please let either Brother Tim or Miss Beth Brumfield know as soon as possible so we can get it on our lovely, magnificent church calendar. And I would like to say that your help would be greatly appreciated in doing so. We had, oh, what was it, Brother Mike? 302 President Discipleship Training tonight. Oh, I'm just kidding. I believe it was 54 in attendance tonight for discipleship training with two visitors. And I would like to read to you a piece from God's Word before we press forward. And it's actually the next passage we'll be studying in the Book of Romans for our youth. As we kind of uh, replayed the passage tonight to dig a little deeper into it. But anyways, starting in verse 18, Romans chapter 1. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men, who by their unrighteousness suppress the truth. For what can be known about God is plain to them, because God has shown it to them. 
for his invisible attributes, namely his eternal power and divine nature, have been clearly perceived ever since the creation of the world and the things that have been made. So they are without excuse. For although they knew God, they did not honor him as God or give thanks to him, but they became futile in their thinking, and their foolish hearts were darkened. Claiming to be wise, they became fools and exchanged the glory of the immortal God for images resembling mortal man and birds and animals and creeping things. Will you join me for a word of prayer? Father, may our hearts, may our minds, may our words, may our actions, may the very core of who we are always seek to honor you. Help us to cast off the sin that so easily hinders us and help us to run open wide for you. God, I pray that we would be a people who are active in sharing the gospel. God, I pray that we would be a people who are about your kingdom work. Lord, I know that so many of us are busy, but God, you have called us to make sure our priorities are in the correct order. God, help us to do so. Help us to put you first above all else. God, we thank you because we know that putting you first above all else is not a hindrance, it is not an obstacle to be overcome, but rather it is a marvelous opportunity to draw ever closer to our Lord, our King, and our Savior. And as we do that, we recognize that our hearts will rejoice and that we will be glad in doing so. Father, we thank you for tonight. God, I pray that we'd be able to just once again come before you to lift up our voices to you. God, I pray that you would be with each singer uh, slash um, whistler and clapper and whoever else decides to make a joyful noise unto you tonight. Kind of searching for my words here, God. But help us to glorify you. Help us to honor you. And God, I pray that our hearts are in the right place as we do these things. We thank you so much for the cross. Thank you for sending your son to die so that sinful man could be restored. Thank you for the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Thank you for holding the keys to life and so freely giving us to them, giving them to us in faith in Jesus. It is by his name that I pray these things, the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Let's go ahead and stand together tonight. We'll sing our offertory hymn, hymn number 615. We'll sing the first and the last. Trials dark on every hand, and we cannot understand all the ways that God will lead us to that blessed promised land. But he'll guide us with his eye, and we'll follow till we die. We will understand it better by and by. By and by, when the morning comes, when the saints of God are gathered home, we will tell the story how we've overcome. We will understand it better by and by. Temptations, hidden snares often take us unawares, and our hearts are made to bleed for some thoughtless word or deed. And we wonder why the test when we try to do our best, but we'll understand it better by and by. By and by. God are gathered home, we will tell the story how we've overcome. We will understand it better by and by. Let us pray. Dear Lord, thank you for letting us come here to worship you tonight, Lord, and I pray that we would go home not just knowing what we know. I just pray that we would learn more about you, God. And I pray that you bless us all, friend, and use it in your will, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.
Amen. Well, you're in for a treat tonight because I heard everybody practice and you're going to receive a blessing tonight. Uh, first up, we're going to have Cole come sing. And if you, I think everybody's got a paper, just come on up, grab a mic. If you need some help, I'll be right here, okay?
the ground with the sound of revival. Let heaven roar and fire fall. Come shake the ground with the sound of revival.
this don't feel good right now and i know you think things i could never think about it's hard to count it all joy stretch it by the noise trying to make sense of all your promises sometimes i gotta stop remember that you're gone Walk me
never sleeps, he never slumbers. He's been awake at every hour. No tear catches him by surprise. He's never lost, he never runs out. He never lives in the shadows of doubt. No fear catches him by surprise. Find rest, my soul. Put your hope in God. Put your hope, put your hope in God. He always is, he always will be. He always has been everything I need. How can this be catching me by surprise? He's ever strong, he's ever faithful. His love is real now, nothing is impossible. Cause nothing catches him by surprise. Find rest, my soul, put your hope. Thank you. 
I think this is the second time in a row I've got up here to whistle. Well, I'm not going to whistle. I just can't. For a lot of a lot of times I've got up here and I've whistled. I remember David Springer telling me one day, that was good. I still don't know if he was telling me what he thought. <laughs> no, I think it is good sometimes, but I, I don't think it's, uh, I'm not prepared. And Brother Tim went and printed something for me a while ago, and, and I was gonna, I went in there and practiced, and I was going to whistle, but I just don't think it's, I just need to practice before we get this in front of this many people. <laughs> But I do have something to share, and I don't mean to derail this thing two times in a row. I would assume anybody else wants to share something. Probably the mic's open. You got a testimony that you want to share. So anyway, during the road to Calvary, I assume it took just as much work as it always has. It, they met for hours. They come and they practice week after week. And when the nights came to have those performances, crowds were small. I don't know how many of you got to see it. I hope all of you did. But the crowds were small. I personally was disappointed for them because I knew how much work it took, how many hours they worked on it. And, and it's, uh, you do all that, you hope there's a big response, but there wasn't. So I, I thought I could see disappointment in their faces and uh, after all that work, but you know what we're supposed to do is be faithful. We're supposed to do what we're called to do, and that's what they did, and that's what you and I have to do this week. We have to be faithful. If Jesus asks us to do something for him, we have to be ready. Each year for the last three years, I guess, is how many years we've done it, I've, I've volunteered to be a, a counselor at the end of the service. Uh, in many ways, that's feel like I'm cheating every time, but I'm also scared every time that somebody will come and I won't have the proper words to say. They'll ask me a question that I don't know the answer to, or they will have a spiritual need that I'm not prepared to, to address. In the past few years, the Lord's took care of that. He's, he's always provided me a few answers, simple questions and a few answers. And, and a couple of years ago, a, a young lady came and she said, I want to accept Christ as my Savior. And Brother Hiram Campbell was standing shoulder to shoulder with me. And I turned and introduced the two, and he led the little girl to the Lord. This year, two little girls came, and they bowed down at the altar to pray with their grandmother. And after some time, the grandmother looked up at me as though she wanted me to come speak to them. And so I did. I leaned over, and I spoke, and, and I asked a few questions, and they said they were Christians. And, I, and, and after some time... I wasn't sure what else to do, so I prayed with them, and they, they, they turned and went back to their pew. After the service, I thought, I'm not sure if I'd done a very good job. I'm not sure if I asked the right questions. I'm not sure if they heard what I was trying to say, so I want to see, and, and I want to talk to them some more. So I caught up with them before they got out of their pew. And I asked the grandmother if they had just a minute, and she said yes. When they was at the altar, I said, are you Christians? And they said yes. They were nine and uh, 12. The grandmother told me when I approached the pew that, that they have never been saved. So we sat down and we talked. I talked with them a few minutes, and I said, I don't think I asked you, I don't think you understood my question, or maybe I didn't ask it clearly. Do you want to be saved tonight? Do you understand what you saw? Do you understand that Jesus died on the cross for you? And do you want to be saved? And I said, I, I knew their names. And we had talked, and it's uh, Lillian and, and Alicia. And I said, each one of you have to make this decision. And I'm going to ask you a few questions. And while I'm asking these questions, I want you to decide. Because your sister can't make this decision. It's only you. And before I could even ask the first question, the little girl said, I want to be saved. And I asked them, did they believe in Christ? And did they believe that that was the only way to have a heavenly father was accepting them to turn from their ways of sin and ask him for forgiveness and ask them into their heart? And both of them accepted Christ as their Lord and Savior. So those that worked in that play for the last few years, I'm not sure if the other two years was just practice for that one night for those two little girls. I want to encourage each of us. 
to not give up, to not grow weary in doing good. Just do what we're supposed to do, and God's going to take care of the rest. So I thank you if, if you participated in the road to Calvary. If you teach a Sunday school class or, or come up here and sing a song, whatever you do, if you're doing it for the Lord, that's all you're supposed to do. He's going to take care of the rest. Thank you. There you did. really think that was my cue when he said the mic was over to anybody. So they don't have a heart attack and not be the same. <clears throat> you know, we never know who might be in a service, song service or whatever. We don't know how many people here has been a Christian for years and years. Uh, if there's someone that maybe is out there that don't know Jesus. And the Sherman has just proclaimed. Uh, it's not how many people is in a service that really matters. It's whether or not there's someone maybe that's in this service that needs Jesus is the most important. And a guy by the name of Jesse McBride spoke Wednesday night in a revival. He talked on commitment. His last name, McBride, rung a true bell at the time I was saved. Uh, some of you older people might remember David McBride. Uh, Gerald McGee had a store October 25th, 1969, where Christy uh, had her beauty shop there right there in front of uh, where he's got the air conditioned place and a guy by the name of David McBride uh, somebody that knows a little bit about cars had a Plymouth Roadrunner 440 motor and you know sometimes we all like to see what a car will do and he left that store seeing what that car would do and he ended up there going into Pounds Road. The car turned bottom side up. And I come up on that wreck. He was halfway up under the car and halfway out. He was dead. I was 18 years of age at that time. Oh, some six years before then, I'd walked this aisle. And thought I was saved, which really I come to find out, really I just walked out. Did not truly have the salvation experience. But on October 25th, 1969, coming up on that wreck, it made me look at my own life. I don't know where he stood with the Lord, but it made me look at my life and wonder where I stood with the Lord. Left that wreck, come here and got out at our store and put one foot out and I heard someone call my name. <clears throat> my grandmother played a slogan. Said, Brent, would you come over to my house? <clears throat> There's a little white house right here where Sybil lives here in a little house right here from the church. The 83 flood got that house this other house was built. So that little white house, she called me over. She had her Bible laid out. She didn't know, know anything about that wreck. But she asked me, she said, son, I want to know how you stand with the Lord. And sometimes you can get confused, you know, particularly if you've, if you've walked the aisle before. But the most important thing is to know that you know that you got Jesus in your heart. And on October 25th, 1969, with her Bible open there, and she was sharing the word with me, a pastor at that time, Brother James Mallard, he comes in the door. And 
some some of you again that knows knows my granddaddy and grandmother they they fed anybody in the community that would want to eat there and he came in and he seen what was going on and more or less he led me to Jesus that morning and his brother Tim has said many times as simple as ABC you got to realize that you lost your condition you got to believe in the one and true God there is only one way the Sherman proclaimed while ago you got to confess it believe repent and confess that he is Lord and ask him to truly come into your heart and save you and the thing about it y'all this life there's many decisions that we make eternity only gives us two and we do get to choose before we spend eternity don't mind if you've got something nice to say about me and I enjoy an accolade like the rest and you can take my picture and hang it in a gallery of all the who's who's and so and so's that used to be the best at such and such it wouldn't matter much Don't lie, it feels all right to see your name in lights. We all need an attaboy or at a girl. But in the end, I'd like to hang my hat on more besides the temporary trappings of this world. I want to leave a legacy. How will they remember me? Did I choose to love? Did I point to you enough to make a mark on things? I want to leave an offering, a child of mercy and grace who blessed your name unapologetically. And leave that kind of legacy. don't have to look too far or too long a while to make a lengthy list of all that I enjoy but they're accumulating trinkets in a treasure pile that moth and rust thieves and such will soon enough destroy I want to leave a legacy how will they remember me did I choose to love did I point to you enough to make a mark on things? I want to leave an offering, a child of mercy and grace who blessed your name unapologetically and leave that kind of legacy. I'm not well-traveled, not well-read, not well to do or well bred I just want to hear instead well done, well done good and faithful one I want to live a legacy how will they Enough to make a mark on things I want to leave an offering A child of mercy and grace Who blessed your name unapologetically And leave that kind of legacy
don't mind if you've got something nice to say about me. Uh, as the guys come forward, would anybody else like to share tonight anything they got on their heart tonight? continue on and we've got one more song to sing and we're going to try to do it to the best of our ability we didn't have a whole lot of time to practice but uh, we're going to sing one and then brother Tim after we get through you can come forward we'll have invitations and everything. Break these chains and set me free. I want to be washed clean. Don't you know I want to be washed clean? Father, take away my pride. Set it all aside. So I might hear what you have to say. Lord, I'm tired of all my guilt, and I'm tired of all my shame. Just break these chains and set me free. I want to be washed clean. Don't you know I want to be washed clean? Because I've been couldn't see and holding on to things I didn't need. She took these hands and washed them clean like a blind man lost in the middle of the night. You came down and you opened my eyes. And I won't ever be the same. Oh, that's what Jesus, Jesus did for
Tim, if you'd come forward. Let's stand together. I feel like somebody has a decision they need to make tonight, Brother Tim. I, I don't know what it is, what decision needs to be made. If you need to come pray, please come pray. If you need to ask Jesus in your heart tonight and you haven't done so, please come tonight. Don't wait. Why don't you bow as I sing invitation? Softly and tenderly Jesus is calling, calling for you and for me. See on the portal he's waiting and watching, watching for you and for sing the second verse together. Why should we tarry? Why should we tarry when Jesus is pleading, pleading for you and for me? Why should we linger and heed not his mercies, mercies for Absolutely.